Recently, I was asked to give an interview about Judaism to a Russian-speaking YouTube channel. It went very well, but as it is often the case in the online world, some comments during the live stream um, were positive and appreciative, but others, well, they were quite rude and sometimes on the edge of being anti-Semitic. A friend of my a friend of mine called me afterwards and suggested that I should probably be more careful and perhaps be a bit less open about being Jewish in public spaces. For example, not not to wear a kippa while giving an interview uh, for a non-Jewish media. Well, I am a rabbi, and it is probably a bit too late for me to be secretive about my Jewish identity. But my friends worry um, or care about wearing a head covering in, pub in, public, uh, in public spaces made me remember my inner dilemma. Do I wear a kippah in public places? What is the relationship between my inner identity and clothes I wear? These questions are especially appropriate this week with the Torah portion Tetzaveh. It has a de detailed description of garments of the high priest. This is also the week of Purim, when one of the traditions is to wear a fancy dress. After all, the Purim story is narrated, among other literary devices, by means of clothing. In chapter 4, for example, after hearing about the evil decree which ordered all Jews to be killed, Mordechai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes, and he went out into the, into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. In chapter 5, Esther prepares to visit the king and puts on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the palace. In chapter 6, Haman suggests to the king, and I quote, For the man whom the king delights to honour, let a royal robe be brought which, which the king was worn, and a royal crown placed on his head. And, and the end of the story, towards the end of the story, when all Haman's power was given to Mordechai and Esther, Mordechai went out in royal apparel of blue and white with a great crown of gold and garment of fine linen and purple, and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. Sackcloth and ashes is a Jewish traditional symbol of destruction, repentance and grief. Royal robes and crown are clear symbols of high power and authority. In the book of Esther, Mordechai wears a sackcloth and ashes in the time of distress and royal garments in the time of victory. Clothing plays an important part in human society. Maybe that is why the Torah is so pedantic about the garments of the high priest, the person who represents God to people and people to God. But are clothes, in fact, ma masks? This is a really good question, especially on Purim. Is clothes the same as masks? Is clothing sometimes so is, is clothing something that expresses my true essence, or perhaps it hides the real person and distracts people from seeing the real essence of my personality? And perhaps it is not a surprise that in Hebrew the word beged, which means cloth or garments, um, garment comes from the same root as the word bagad, which means betrayal or treachery. Rabbi Alex Israel from the International Jewish School Pardes notes that Jewish scholars have two perspectives on the meaning of cloth and especially the high priest's garments. On the one hand, Sefer HaChinuch discusses the high priest's clothing in the following manner. A person is affected and transformed by means of his or her actions. 
Hence, it is fitting that the priest wears special clothes that at that any moment in which he will glance at his body, he will be immediately reminded and re, re, reawakened to, to before whom he serves. The clothes affects the person and who wears them. Clothes can serve as a reminder of one's responsibilities, like a police or firefighter's uniform. In fact, when I wear a kippa in public, I am very aware that I, I might or that other people might might see me as representative of Jewish people. There is another perspective in Jewish sources about the meaning of clothing. Netziv, the 19th century rabbi Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin, the dean of the famous Volozhen Yeshiva, uh, and an author of several works in rabbinic literature, uh, he lived in Lithuania, he wrote in one of his books, since Aaron must sanctify himself and act in a pious manner, he should be viewed in the eyes of the people as a person who is separate and above them. The cloth of splendor led people to understand that Aaron is special and uh, Aaron is the first high priest about whom uh, the Torah portion, portion is um, focusing, about whose cloth uh, garments the Torah portion is focusing. In other words, the clothes you wear is a message to others. People who have a special position should be visible to others and give a clear message that they are special. These two commentaries give a balanced perspective. They're different, but they give a balanced perspective. It serves as a reminder of your role in the society to you at the same time, it gives people around you a message of who you are. But at the same time, without diminishing the importance of clothes, Judaism had no blessing for everyday garments, for everyday dressing up. This is unusual for Jewish tradition. Classical rabbinic Judaism tries to sanctify every moment of our lives there is a blessing for every type of food we eat, not necessarily on Shabbat, but every type of food we eat, for seeing a rainbow, a beautiful person, a blessing when we wake up, a blessing after going to the loo, after all, uh, but, but, but no blessing for putting on your clothes. There is only a blessing for putting on talit and tefillin, a special religious garments, a uniform which helps you to concentrate on prayer. Perhaps the message here is not to worship your look. It is important to look after yourself and look nice, but not to make it your idol. Especially in the time when we constantly look, look at our own images through Zoom box. Um, it is I think, an important message. In one of the famous Marvel Universe movies, Iron Man is a mentor to Spider-Man. In one of their conversations, Spider-Man demands his new shiny suit. Iron Man says to the young, unexperienced superhero, if you are nothing without the suit, then you shouldn't have it. Whether you wear a keeper or not, whether you own 20 pairs of shoes or just one, whether you have your work uniform or not, it is not something which defines you. It is a mask which is here to serve you and help you to be yourself and to be the best version of you. Shabbat Shalom.